What's up guys, welcome to JP Fitness, as always, I am JP, and welcome to Ask JP, and as you can tell, I have another special guest today, this is Madeline Smith, she is a certified personal trainer up here in Ames at uh, Ames Racket and Fitness, so Madeline, welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, so yeah, let's uh, get a little bit into your background, um, your personal trainer, what got you into that field, and um, you went to Iowa State, got mm -hmm. your degree there. What, where was the interest coming from where you wanted to look at that line of work? Yeah, so actually I didn't really know at all what I wanted to do um, until last year, May, March 2016. Um, so I was months away from graduation, still not sure exactly what direction I wanted to go with our major, whether it be corporate wellness or training or anything else in that realm of PT school. Um, but we had a class called... Yeah. Um, 459. I don't know if you've taken, you probably, yeah, you had to have taken yep. that. Um, 459. That sounds familiar. Um, and you were in a lab in the exercise clinic and you got assigned one uh, person to work with throughout like a 12 week program. And that was my first experience working one on one. And I had the sweetest um, older lady, and she was 67, and just like we connected. And um, I found out that I love one on one, I love people. Um, and we ended up working together the rest of the summer, actually three times a week. Um, and I got certified, and it just like it just was natural for me. And at that point, I knew um, I wanted to do that full time. And I wasn't sure how that was going to happen, but um, the doors opened up, and I was able to get in at Ames Rapid Fitness, and it's been really good. So, awesome. yeah, I was literally well, months away right. from graduation, not knowing what I wanted to do, and it, it worked out. <laughs> this all falls into place. You just don't even got to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you got certified, all that um, stuff starts to happen. Um, we're working at Ames Rack and Fitness. What have been some of the negative things around the personal training um, area that you've kind of seen as a personal trainer from your view? Yeah, um, there's kind of a stigma with personal trainers that people who don't know what personal training is or have never experienced a good trainer will instantly associate, um, especially female trainers, with, oh, you're like Jillian Michaels. And no to Jillian. No, uh, we are not like Jillian Michaels, our biggest loser. Uh, there's no science behind what they do. That's pure entertainment. Um, and so really, the, the biggest part of my job, the biggest obstacle to overcome is showing people that you get somebody who is knowledgeable, is a professional, is going to incorporate science and lots of thought into what they're doing, take them through something that's going to get them to where they want to be, and while you're there, you get an accountability partner, um, you get a motivational person, you get a friend through it too. And, um, and so it's, it's the hardest thing is selling that you aren't there to just give them a tough workout and send them on their way with a broken, the broken knee. Like this is a CrossFit either. Right. You know, I, I also get that too. Like, oh, you're a trainer, so you you probably do like CrossFit stuff. And I'm always like, no, I'm completely different than CrossFit. I have a functional training um, aspect of things. Like we're going to work on your movement patterns long before yes. I set you with the bar to deadlift. Yes. I just had a client, um, a young woman, same age as me, and we've been working together for three months. And she just now picked up a barbell and did a um, deadlift. And we spent a month specifically doing pre-requisite training to make sure that everything was stabilized and her form was perfect before I ever put her on a barbell. And her form was perfect after that. So it was it was really good. That's awesome. I'm just grinning from ear to ear because she's doing everything right. Sorry, oh, sh shout, out, shout, out, shout out to the friends. <laughs> We're, we're in an interview, sorry. It's okay. This is totally going to make the cut, though. Yeah, it it's is. Awesome. <laughs> this is live TV. At one time it was. <laughs> when you live in Ames, you know everyone. <laughs> that is cool. Shout out to Ames. Uh, we're at Cafe DM right now. Yes. Shout out to Cafe DM. <laughs> Love Cafe DM. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I say, I'm smiling from getting, uh, grinning from ear to ear because she's doing everything right is why I'm smiling Thank so you. much. Right? <laughs> yes. So, there's my little nudge for you. Um, but, like, even... Uh, I completely the bash CrossFit, but if there's um, certain steps that aren't taken right away, things can go wrong um, going into something too early, yeah. which is why she spent so much time working on the form so that when she goes into that lift, that deadlift, for example, it was perfect. You don't, It's much easier to build from the ground up than go back later and try to correct something. 
which I think we've probably had the experience with clients in before having to go back and do that sort of thing. So yeah. that's and not that's bash awesome. and CrossFit. There are some CrossFits out there that do it right, oh, absolutely. but there are more that I have experienced people come in and say, I got injured from this. So that's just the reality of it. So. A lot of injury around it. A lot yeah. of injury around um, um, a lot of different lifts. Maybe someone just uh, coming in brand new, like I want to learn how to do this, I want to lift this. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and try it. And uh, maybe they didn't do the proper technique or even know where to start. Uh, maybe they weren't utilizing a personal trainer just to kind of learn and get that kind of thing going. So, no, that's awesome. So, um, Madeline and I are both Christians, so we were kind of talking about this a little bit ago of how our faith um, translates into our training and how we can do that. Um, without maybe um, crossing the line to make feel, someone feel uncomfortable, but kind of let them know um, this is us and this is what we're all about. So um, in your time training so far, um, even in your past experiences, how have you kind of um, put your faith on display into your training style and um, things you like yeah, so one of the first things with my job is we're not supposed to talk about religion or politics, um, which is perfectly fine because, you know, we're, I'm representing a company that is not associated with a specific denomination or, you know, party or anything like that. So I do everything I can in my power to respect my authority, um, so my bosses and all that. But I also know that my faith is part of who I am. And there are times when I can't separate the two. So if it ever is, so if one of my clients ever asks me, hey, um, you know, what church do you go to? Or, you know, something like that comes up, I'm happy to share with them. Um, so in terms of conversation-wise, if the opportunity arises and it's appropriate and I know that it's not going to intervene with our work that we're doing, um, then I'm happy to share some of my beliefs if that's what they want to hear. And I always, you know, I'm open to hearing theirs. And I never want to be like, oh, well, what you believe is wrong or anything like that. So I'm open to anything. I've worked with people from all different countries and denominations and religions and backgrounds, and, and there's a very mutual respect if that ever comes up. Um, in the sense of how you treat your clients, for me, I just try to go above and beyond in how I love them, how I like communicate with them, how I work with them on a daily basis, um, my follow-ups, my... Um, just even in how I show them form, I want them to be like, this person is different, and to see that, and um, and I want them to know like the love that they're receiving isn't from me, but from my Lord that I love so much, and He loves me, and that's overflowing um, through me. And so I just wake up every morning, and I'm like, okay, God, like, how can I serve you today um, through this through this job? And if conversation arises, that's great. And if not, let my actions be louder than my words. Awesome. That's how I incorporate it. I think she uh, said it perfectly with, um, I guess my approach is I hope people see me differently as a trainer. Not like, um, I guess I struggle with um, the line being, um, how can I be strict enough to push them without being like too mean? But yeah. then like have a good <laughs> yes. spirit of like encouragement for them to feel like he is different or like, oh, he was such a jerk today. He really pushed me. Yeah. Um, and just like kind of how I treat them, kind of how I love them. So I hope that's definitely what my clients can kind of see as well, and uh, different ways of like coming off to the side and just maybe if questions were asked, and I say, well, this is me, this is what I believe, and kind of deal. But definitely, I think the easiest way for someone to see that is to see the difference within a trainer. Either this is a really like nice trainer, like every day is a great day for him or her. I wonder why that is. And maybe there is an internal reason why that is. So no, that's that's awesome. So. We talked a little bit about, um, off camera, we were talking about a trainer's identity and something how, uh, kind of how you even touched earlier a few minutes ago, of how it's kind of been given a bad reputation. So what do you see as um, the, like, the main identity as a trainer right now, and what would you kind of like to see it as a personal trainer? Yeah, I would love to see the identity of personal trainers move from being a luxury to being a necessity. Um, in that sense that I want to see the exercise industry collaborating with the medical industry and um, being like, okay, this is a preventative measure. This isn't just a luxury of, oh, well, I have a couple extra hundred dollars, I'll go get a trainer because I can. I want it to be like, hey, I'm invest 
this money now so that I don't have to invest the money into a hospital bill later on. Preventative medicine is the up and coming medicine and I want personal training to be part of that. Perfect. Something on the screen, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. Because um, how I was talking a little bit ago, um, kind of getting them to realize like this uh, smaller investment now is going to set you up for a lot more success than a much more expensive medical bill later. And to try to get someone to realize you're here in the spot for a reason. Um, you're talking to me about personal training for a reason because either something hasn't gone right in the past or you, have, you haven't been able to get over a mental or physical barrier. I'm someone here who cares enough to um, help you get over that and to kind of get them to understand that I am being genuine when I say that. It's not about the money coming in from me. It's about, it's about how I, I can help you and get you to the spot. Yeah, exactly. So. If it was about the money, like... There's a million other things in the world that you can do where you can make a exactly. ton of money. You can always, <laughs> there can always be another way for us to make money, um, just as there's always probably um, a money obstacle or excuse for someone to not invest in personal training. Yeah. Kind of like how you hit on that. Um, the benefits when it comes to that are just going to be um, very monumental for someone if they yeah. like, stick with it and have less than more. So um, that's kind of um, what we had today for you guys. Uh, I want to thank Madeline for coming on and talking with me a little bit about uh, personal training. And uh, we've been having a really great conversation. It's great to see um, her side of things over in um, uh, her fitness organization, Andrew and Fitness, and then um, the comparison and even some differences um, with me over at Anytime Fitness in Altoona. So it, it's been really great to see those comparisons and just kind of like collaborate and just um, kind of get notes on that. So thank you once again, Madeline, for thank coming on. And uh, thank you guys for joining us. This was a really fun episode. And uh, I'll see you next time.